because I had a series of two dreams that has a message I want to share. Church told me once, with faith you can boldly walk into heaven. I thought I was doing everything right. This is part of it, but I got married and her family were a Buddhist family and um, well respected. Big wedding. Mm. I would tell them about Jesus, that Jesus loves them. One by one, her brothers, all her brothers, her mom in her room, and she pointed out a Bible and said, yes, I love Jesus too. But we were young and we departed and her mom quickly died and I had a dream where she came approached me in my dream she was like a glowing white uh, outfit it didn't have a, a shine but it just had like a light bulb glow and um, she had she looked very happy and she came closer to me and she rubbed she rubbed my arm like this with two fingers and she said you know like black people and I woke up I didn't understand the dream because I have black friends I, I don't have anything against black people I didn't understand So I had another dream right after this dream that the kind of dream where you remember and never forget. But I remember in this dream that I was staring at my feet, that I was barefooted and I was standing on um something that felt perfect on my feet like the way that the temperature the way how it felt like it wasn't like a flat marble slab where you can slip this thing had a uh, felt like a nice perfect grip and I started looking at what I was standing on and it was like a it wasn't gold but it was golden and it kind of had like these sparkles in it where it kind of looked like it dissipated thicker and as it got to the thicker of it and um and that's when you feel the presence of um of no time it's like a uh, you just know that there's no any time there and so when I raised my eyes because in the dream I was looking at the ground and even wanted a closer look at it but then when I raised my eyes I saw a uh, a gate I said so I, I said I must be in I must be in heaven the the peace And where I stood, but I saw a gate, and uh, on the other side of the gate, it was like a whole bunch of black people looking at me, and I had this feel of like, they're looking at me like, um, he, he think he's about to walk up in here or something, but these people had ancient type of look like they were taller 
different kind of shapes, but they were all black. I didn't see anything else. Peace, love, and light to all the queen goddesses, to all the beautiful, lovely star seeds, to all my fellow king gods who see the god in me. I see you. I truly love you, my people. I hope you enjoyed that introduction. First and foremost, the reason why I played that introduction is going to further underline my theory and my point and what took place uh, in that darkness up in Russia, well, up in Siberia. Now, if you listen to that guy, he had two dreams. The first dream, the woman came in his dream and she placed these two fingers on him. And it was these represent God and earth. And he's carved in the pyramids all across the globe. Now, when she rubbed his skin in his dream, she said, you're not black. You're not black. And he, when he woke up, he thought like, you know what I mean? She was saying that he was racist. He was like, he was like, well, I got black friends. You know what I mean? I'm not racist or anything. So he had another dream. And the other dream, in his dream, the dream started off. He was looking down at his feet. And then when he looked up and saw the open door, the big gate, he saw nothing but black people. But however, the point that I want to get to is at the very end and when he when it when it when it cut off is how he described us. We were very dark. And on only top of that, we were tall and he and we had elongated skulls. You understand? Very Egyptian like because that's all they know. That's what they remember because that's in their blood. Remember, these entities came here 64,000 years years ago with that moon and they've been genetically creating these people on this planet for quite some time and along with us procreating with these people the black man stepped out of line he got into his ego and you have to let go of your ego and face reality because we are all going to be judged point blank and simple now the now the what i want to talk about is siberia it went dark between the hours of 11 p.m and 2 p.m their time now those that don't know about siberia 24 hours, seven days a week, Siberia has pure daylight. It does not go dark. It was so dark that people could not see they, their hands in front of their face. They had to turn their lights on. They had to light torches and walking down the street. That's how dark it was. Now, the people, there are two stories there, there my people. The people there has a whole total different story than what the news and the media had let out. First and foremost, they said that the... The, it was smoke from a fire that blocked out the sun. Now you have a place, there's a, the sun is at its high point between 11 and 2 o'clock. The sun is at its high point at noon. And you mean to tell me smoke from a fire blocked the sun out completely? And there's more fires happening over in Canada and, and, and uh, in the West Coast right now than it is over there. So you mean to tell me smoke broke that, blocked that out? And then it's, then they're going to say, dust from the Saharan from from Africa blocked it out now people you use your common sense and logic that shit did not happen the other story is the military came in there and and they took people's cell phones told people you open your mouth you run into your run your mouth things are going to get hap happen to them you're going to get locked up now and I want you to listen to the to the first story that I'm going to play here with Naughty Beaver and then after I play that story, I want you to listen to the other story that I'm going to play at the end when the, when, when this when this Russian um, um, news reporter or this Russian whistleblower always give up the correct information when it comes down to the Anunnaki, my people. I want you to listen to this. I want you to use your God-loving heart, use common sense and logic, use your third eye. Listen very carefully and very clearly. Listen when those when that darkness came over, it was a huge spaceship, and I'm gonna tell you this right now: it was a huge spaceship. That brought rare iron oxide dust. It blocked out the sun and portals opened up. And we went in there and we went in and they did what they needed to do. If you don't remember in, my, in any of my videos, they told Putin. Anunnaki told Putin, stop what you're doing because Putin is the number one person that is fighting against the Anunnaki. He said, stop what you're doing and we'll, 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 let you, we'll let you breathe. If you don't, your country and your people will be the first to go and be enslaved. So they're not stopping. And if you, anyone can call me pseudoscience. You can call it whatever you want. But I want you to listen to both stories. One from the media and one from the whistleblower from Russia. And I want you to tell me in your heart what you believe that really took fucking place. And like I said to you, all every night, just to go back on this real quick. Every night during the day, the UVA, the UVB, and the UVC is tearing their ass up. At night, spaceships are coming across the sky and sprinkling red iron oxide dust across the sky. That's why at night, parts of the sky be be red, the other part of the sky be blue, and the other part of the sky be dark. Because they're doing this shit across the globe all day and night long. It is called terraforming. This is what they call terraforming. It's their terror while they form the planet. Enjoy the video.
Peace, love, and light to all the queen goddesses, to all the beautiful, lovely star seeds, to all my fellow king gods who see the God in me. I see you. I truly love you, my people. Russia's other day turned into complete darkness for almost three hours on Friday, July the 20th, 2018. Four days ago. On a Friday, no less. What a ripoff. Question number one, how is this even possible? I hope that's going to go through your head while I'm reading here. The region was hit by bizarre darkness between 1130 and 1400 local time. Friday, with, every, um, with Russia, <laughs> mysterious phenomenon. Reports received over the next couple of days also included the district of Russia, making the territory affected by the mysterious darkness larger than Italy. This is the amazing part. The Siberian Times reports. Remember what that just said. I couldn't see a thing without switching the lights on. We took torches to walk outside, but no one wanted to be on the street because of the feeling was as if something heavy in the air pressing on our chest, said one resident. At first, it looked like it was a strong thunderstorm coming. One eyewitness said the air went dark and got darker and darker. But this time, unlike anything else we have seen before, the darkness had a rich yellow undertone. It was very unusual. Another incredible clue sitting here. Take these two colors you see and blend them together. Work on that problem while I'm reading here. <laughs> the main assumption initially was that smoke from raging wildfires in other districts had blotted out the sun, but officials have expressed doubts over this theory without explaining what caused the weird phenomenon. Some residents are even saying that a light flash was registered by the U.S. satellites, followed by an increase of radioactive level and unusual activity of the military. An official in the Russia settlement contradicted residents who had reported a thick layer of dust after the cloud and darkness vanished. There was no dust. I do have a short article I want to read. It'll take me two or three minutes. I will let you go. The title of the article is Anunnaki Raid. Russian town. And I will read. 25 people from the remote Russian village of Nizhny Potomsky have been reported missing in the aftermath of an extraterrestrial incursion that took place on the afternoon of July 24. As the skies above northern Russia inexplicably darkened and the atmosphere was saturated with an ominous red-yellow hue that effectively turned day into night. Whether the extraterrestrial invaders created the atmospheric anomaly or merely took advantage of it remains uncertain. The Kremlin has refused to comment on either incident officially. But our source, former KGB agent Strelnikov Isaac Stepanovich, finds it highly unusual that the alien assault coincided with the mysterious eclipse-like event. The Ministry of Defense, Stepanovich said, began receiving real-time reports of abnormally tall humanoids skulking about the Nizhny Potomsky settlement shortly after the skies, which normally at this time of year have virtually 24 hours of daylight, went dark. I quote Stepanovich. Nothing like this has happened before in history. Outdoors, people carry torches to see. Witnesses reported seeing portals open and very tall, ghoulish-looking creatures stepping through them. The descriptions matched what we know as Anunnaki. They advanced on the settlement and abducted people who had gone outside to see what had suddenly turned a beautifully bright day into darkness. One witness spoke of a thick layer of red dust after darkness and said she saw a pair of ten-foot-tall creatures with concave-shaped skulls entering a neighbor's home. She thought she heard a sudden scream, but admitted that the impenetrable cloud of dust impaired vision and muffled sound. Stepanovich said, the event, the event lasted nearly two hours. During this time, the MOD, Ministry of Defense, intercepted numerous telephone calls and electronic communications describing similar occurrences. This was an Anunnaki attack on Russian sovereignty. Another resident, Lyudmila Bogdanova, said the sun vanished and monsters appeared on the streets. 
She claimed one such creature abducted her mother-in-law mother -in and vanished into nothingness. She likened the event to John Carpenter's movie The Fog, which tells the story of, str of a strange glowing fog that sweeps over a small coastal town in California, bringing with it the vengeful ghosts of mariners who were killed in a shipwreck there 100 years before. She said, They came into our homes and took us. Whatever it was, it dragged my mother by her hair down the road, and then they both just disappeared. Stefanovic said many people reported similar sightings, quoting him, when it became clear this was an Anunnaki intrusion, Putin tried to mobilize forces from the Metskoya outpost, but he was too late. By the time special services arrived on location, it was all over. Sunshine once again filled the sky, and two dozen residents were missing, obviously taken by the Anunnaki. Perhaps in response to Putin's war against them, we just don't know, Stepanovich said. Special services interrogated Konstantin Starosin, head of the Nizhny Batonsky settlement. He said a heavy air pressed upon his chest and he had difficulty breathing as unknown beasts emerged from the darkness. Moreover, special services confiscated cellular phones and recording devices that might have captured evidence of the alien invasion. Villagers were told a hallucinogenic gas had accidentally been released into the atmosphere and that physicians, not aliens, had taken missing friends and family for treatment for prolonged exposure. In closing, Stefanovic says the following. Witnesses were ordered not to speak of what they think they might have seen. They were told violating a gag order would result in their being taken into custody for an indefinite period of time. What happened here can happen anywhere and is proof these alien vermin still have free, free reign across our planet. At this meeting, the Anunnaki delivered the ultimatum. Leave us alone, we'll leave you alone or else perish with the rest of the world. The Anunnaki told him that in exchange for not interfering with their plans, they would leave Russia alone and not even set foot on Russian soil without explicit permission. The Anunnaki also said they would tell Putin how to survive Nibiru passing through the solar system. On the other hand, if Putin refused to offer the offer, the Anunnaki said Russia would be the first to fall and its people would be enslaved and taken as food. So Putin told them to go away. We do not want you here. He told leave the planet and never come back. You know what the Anunnaki told him? Uh, no, but I'm hoping you'll tell me. The Anunnaki said to Putin, Earth is our planet, not yours. We are the ones who seeded the Earth with strands of life. He said that they grew all life on Earth. As in uh, a giant petri dish. Humans, Yanunaki said, belong to them, just as your mother's chicken belonged to her. 